OK, uh, good evening. Ha the title of my lightning talk is, Have You Heard of Provenance? So how many of you have heard of Provenance? OK, about 50 to 60 percent of the audience. Uh, I first encountered Provenance when I ran into this clang tidy warning around two years ago. The warning is named Performance No Int2 Pointer. And the documentation page describes why you might care about this warning from a performance pers per perspective. However, despite its name, it turns out that this warning diagnoses more than just a performance bug or missed optimization. It, code that triggers this warning can actually lead to inconsistent program behavior in real world code today, despite being well defined by the standard. I wanted to share a taste of this fascinating subject with you tonight. But disclaimer, I cannot claim to be a subject matter expert. Those are the subject matter experts. Everything in this talk is directly informed by those resources. Cambridge is a 30 page paper basically saying, this is a problem, please fix it. N2656 is a 123 page paper that says, OK, this is a problem. Here's our attempt to fix it for the C language. Uh, this, the the three-part article series by RalphJ.de is a beginner-friendly but still thorough overview of the topics discussed in the other two papers. And there's also a Rust uh, language improve, improvement proposal that is very relevant to this topic. I highly recommend reading those in your own time. This lightning talk hopefully shows a compelling preview into why I find the subject so interesting. Before the exciting stuff, let's establish the status quo. N2676 states that the provenance is part of the abstract state in C's abstract machine, but not necessarily part of the object representation of the pointer itself. Thus, in general, it is not observable. This describes both the C and C++ languages today. To demonstrate, consider the following example. Oh, also uh, phrased differently. This is actually almost paraphrasing a note in the C++ standard, too. <clears throat> Consider the following example where local variables x and y happen to be allocated adjacent to each other in memory. This is not surprising for most people. We initialize that pointer p as a past the end uh, pointer to x and a pointer q as a pointer to y. Uh, it is valid but unspecified, but unspecified behavior to equality compare two pointers from unrelated objects or arrays. So this expression may return true. The false case is not interesting for us today. In both C and C++ today, it is undefined behavior to dereference a past the end pointer P, even if it is bytewise equal to a valid pointer to, for example, object Q. See the reference standard E section, basic.compound for the details. A note about abstract machine behavior versus hardware behavior, I don't have time to discuss, so I defer to Bob Stiegel's excellent CPPCon 2021 talk instead. Up to this point, we are in happy standards land. However, this being the case, it turns out that as Cambridge states, implementations can track the origins or provenance of pointer values, but exactly what this means is left undefined and has not never been incorporated into the standards uh, text. There are some amazing consequences of this. If we slightly modify our previous example, they're still uh, adjacent to each other memory, we are using pointer to integer casts instead. And casting it back to a pointer to integer in what we sometimes call a round trip cast. So this expression is equivalent to a pointer to y. Uh, and so this is just an assignment to the variable y. So this program obviously prints 42. But it is ambiguous whether some programming idioms are allowed or not, and exactly what compiler anal alias analyses and optimizations are allowed to do, because it, this provenance is left underspecified. For example, we can make the completely valid argument that casting a pointer to an integer has a side effect. To demonstrate this, consider, let us think like a uh, compiler that is optimizing this program and treat IP and IQ as just integers. If they are just integers, and this is just an integral equality comparison, and IP should be completely equivalent to IQ in, in this branch, meaning we can, ob we can substitute IP uh, into IQ. And that should be fine, right? They're just integers. However, that means that this, round, this is now a round trip cast that is equivalent to the past the end pointer, which means that now our program has undefined behavior. Furthermore, unrelated, now there is no references to the object y, so y is never modified. And so this program obviously prints 2. So to prevent this contradiction, we have to conclude that even if IP is bytewise equality comparable, memcomp, memcomp equal, equal to each other, IP is still not substitutable with IQ because the abstract machine must remember the original value, the provenance of IP and IQ, even when they are integers. This is the side effect of pointer to, pointer to integer casts that Clang Tidy was warning about. There are so many more interesting examples that I don't have time to cover. So if you are interested, again, please check out those resources. It is fascinating. Thank you very much.